We left off last episode with Lord Toronaga unveiling his daring Crimson Sky strategy. The plan hinged on a surprise attack on Osaka Castle while the city was celebrating. But for this gambit to work, Toronaga absolutely needed the military support of his younger half-brother, Saiki Nobutatsu. The episode 7 opens up with Toranaga meeting his brother, Nobutatsu. The complex relationship between the two brothers is explored, highlighting their divergence despite sharing blood. Toranaga, driven by ambition, has carved his own path to power. Saeki, on the other hand, might be more cautious or content with his position. There's a possibility that a genuine brotherly bond exists, but it's likely overshadowed by the political realities of the time. At the dinner before Saeki drops the real bombshell, he recounts a hilarious story from their childhood, portraying Toranaga as a weak, cowardly boy who constantly needed rescuing. This fabricated narrative is a deliberate jab at Toranaga's reputation. Saeki paints a picture of his older brother as unfit to lead, someone who achieved power through cunning manipulation rather than strength or merit. The laughter dies abruptly. And with a chilling proclamation, Saeki declares his allegiance to the Council of Regents, Toranaga's sworn enemies. He also declared to hold a Jiro hostage until Toranaga decides to surrender in Osaka. And Nagakado is ordered to commit seppuku for killing Nabara Josen. The Council of Regents in Osaka holds significant power. Saeki's decision to betray Toranaga could be influenced by their promises or threats. Perhaps they offered him a more secure position or warned him of the dangers of aligning with Toranaga's ruthless ambition. Meanwhile, John Blackthorne finds himself caught in a web of suspicion. Mariko's husband, Lord Bantaro, is green with jealousy. He's convinced John and Mariko are having a love affair and demands Toranaga to let him behead John. Toranaga, however, points out that if Buntaro truly believes John and Mariko are seeing each other, then by samurai law, Mariko would also face punishment. This unexpected twist leaves Buntaro speechless, and Blackthorn has to breathe a sigh of relief, for now at least. As the episode drew to a close, a ripple of chaos spread through the samurai castle. Toranaga declares his intention to Nobutatsu of surrendering himself to Osaka. Despite frantic pleas and arguments from his advisors, and even some choice insults from a furious Blackthorn, Toranaga remains resolute. At the end of episode, after Nobutatsu is done enjoying Lady Kiku's services, Nagakado, enraged by his uncle's defiance, makes a rash decision. Blinded by anger and a thirst for vengeance, he attempts to assassinate Saeki. This impulsive act highlights Nagakado's biggest flaw, his inability to think strategically. Even if Nagakado had succeeded in killing Saeki, it wouldn't have changed the dire situation Toranaga's army faced. In fact, it might have only worsened things, plunging the entire country into even deeper chaos. The attempted assassination takes a horrifying turn. During the struggle, Nagakado loses his footing and falls. His head strikes a rock with a sickening thud, a truly brutal and unexpected death for a character who, despite his flaws, possessed a certain bravado. Nagakado's demise serves as a stark reminder of the show's ruthless world. One moment you're a hot-headed young warrior, the next you're a lifeless body on the ground. It's a chilling scene that reinforces the high stakes of the game everyone's playing. With his son dead and his Crimson Sky plan in tatters, Toranaga is left in a precarious position. The episode ends with the warlord staring out at the Crimson Sky, a sense of defeat and contemplation etched on his face. This cliffhanger leaves us with a ton of questions. How will Toranaga react to Seiki's betrayal and Nagakado's death? Will he abandon his ambitions altogether, or will this setback only fuel his desire for vengeance? The future of the show hangs in the balance. Seiki's betrayal is a major turning point in the series. It throws the entire power struggle wide open. The Council of Regents now has the upper hand, and Toranaga's position is significantly weakened. This episode also highlights the dangers of ambition without a clear strategy. Toranaga's reliance on his brother's support exposed a critical flaw in his plan. It serves as a cautionary tale for both Toranaga and the viewers. Underestimating your enemies and overestimating your allies can be deadly. The episode's central theme is the precarious nature of trust. In this world of political maneuvering, alliances are flimsy at best. Saiki's betrayal reinforces the idea that even blood ties can be severed when ambition and self-preservation take hold. This theme is likely to continue playing out in future episodes. We can expect to see more characters questioning who they can truly rely on and who might betray them for personal gain. 
If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe our channels for more updates on TV shows and movies.